What's poppin'? It's going down right now. This is yours truly, the legendary guru. I'm here with my partner. Solar, 5,000 degrees and cooking. Repping real music, real hip hop. That's right, it's been lost, but now it's found right here. And you're checking out Digital NBAF. There it is. Peace. They call me a connoisseur, she's screaming for more Not cause of my fame or my rhyme aesthetics It's cause of my ways and my fly magnetic He's got a new soul great and I Only know his nature fly Only do something to me The magnetic won't let me be He don't even have to try The pull on me so strong and I'm Only holding on in vain When he's around me I can't maintain As, a, as an artist you know, I've always, I've always been the type that wanted to push, push boundaries and so forth. I didn't like to be labeled as one thing. Um, Jazzmatazz came out of the fact that um, just because a lot of the groups around the same era as us were sampling jazz, and I was like, that was cool, and I, and you know, I was into it myself. But uh, I was like, let's take it to the next level because I didn't really like being called jazz rap, just, just that. And then, um, but I was like, at the same time, how about I even take it further and get the actual jazz cats who we sample, get them in the studio, bring in world-class vocalists, mix it all up and see what happens, um, and bring the generations together. Because of course, there were people who thought that hip hop was just, you know, and rap was just some violent noise. And of course, there was a lot of the, the hip hop audience, the rap audience who didn't know the history and didn't, didn't really know that, hey, this comes from, you know, these break records come from jazz. So that was the initial concept, and then it grew from there with hip hop and jazz at the roots, but as it grew, you got elements of R&B, soul, funk, reggae, and so forth. Um, as far as, as where it comes in, in, the, in the whole continuum, I think, you know, it, I've been influenced by those kind of artists who, who you really, you know, you never really cared about how old they were, you never, you, they just came with some cool stuff, you know. Um, artists who, who were who were very um, transcending as far as generations, as far as race, and so forth. I, I think that's where my influences come, i.e. A, a Bob Marley or, or something like that, or even a Prince, you know. Um, so there, there, there's that element as well. Seven Grand is not just a record label, it's a movement. Yes. So in terms of a movement, and I hear what you're saying, that if we get people to wrap their heads around the fact that there was a root, but you know, what else do you want to come out of this movement that is Seven Grand Records? I think what we want to, one of the things, and of course I'll pass the mic after I say this, um, <laughs> is that you know, the whole attitude that came out, let's say you had this, you had this era in hip hop that they call the golden era, um, and then you had after that, you know, this whole bling thing. And during that, the during bling that bling thing, thing that a lot of the stuff, bling, thing. bling <laughs> era, <you know? laughs> during that bling era, a lot of stuff changed. And we got away from what was cultural, what was lyrical, what was really going on to too much of what I got. I mean, there used to be rhymes about, you know, material things, but it was more, you know, every other, every other rhyme or every other three rhymes, but not everything being about that. And then you had a, you know, it created a sense of everybody wanting that instant gratification. And to me, as an artist, I feel like, you know, okay, you know, it's entertainment, but at the same time, you have to have some responsibility as far as how you affect the audience. And what happens is, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna sell out and do whatever just, just to make the big bucks and put forth stereotypical messages or messages that are, could be detrimental to those listening? That's where I have a problem. And that's why probably I don't have the, the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces and whatever, but that's okay with me. So I think that, that that's an issue. You know, I don't think that every rapper I'm not saying every rapper should be about the same. I think what makes hip hop great is that we are different pieces to a puzzle and everybody's coming with different perspectives and so forth. That's beautiful, but at the same time, 
with with all of that, the materialism and so forth, I think that 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 hurt the culture a lot. It hurt the art form, and I think that's that's why you have to have a seven grand at this time to resurrect some things and and to rebuild and to uh, to be those effective, intelligent leaders to bring hip hop forward to the future. This real challenge, when I, and I can say as a business, was to because the first three were done on, on a major label with multi, you know, multi, multi large budgets between them, and here we are challenged now to make an album that lives up to that quality, but at the same time do it uh, with. with no money, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Little we understand or no, no money. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it with no money. <laughs> but at the same time, we had a wish list. So we wanted the Commons. We wanted the Damian Marley. Mm -hmm. We wanted the Bobby Valentino. So um, we wanted the Karen And it forces you to be cre creative, though, like more creative with it really bringing something forward that you probably didn't even know that you had. Well, well what it Definitely. made us do was get on planes and go and see these people. <laughs> because of the flesh. <laughs> like, yeah, we really need your record right now. That's right. We I have no money. <laughs> I have to big up everybody that got involved on that. Because, yeah, I mean, they, they really looked out and they really gave their whole, you know, artistic presence to the record. You know what I mean? So big up to Damien, yes, Common, um, everybody. David Karen Sanford. Wheeler, Vivian Green, Raheem Devon, Kem. Uh, Omar, Black Alicious, Black Alicious, Slum Village, David Sanborn, Ronnie Laws. Nice. Mm. Well, immediately, what's next is, is touring worldwide uh, with 8.0. Um, more more dates coming in as, as we speak for the United States, and we got a European thing coming up in July. Um, you know, besides that, it's about. Um, building uh, new projects in the studio, uh, documentary film projects. So Solar is brilliantly constructing some, some film projects. Um, he's also working with Cable and High Power on their album. Um, he has his album that he's working on, which is bananas. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the, the whole thing of expanding seven grand. But at, that expansion will come as a result of the will of the people, as opposed to just, I mean, we've had offers already, but those weren't the right offers. You know, we're not going to be, if I didn't sell out up to this point, I'm not going to sell out now. It doesn't make any sense. So the right situation to come for us and, you know, it'll come. And then, and then it's a question of developing the new talent and, and other things to, to you know, to, to bigger levels. And um, that's all very exciting. So I, I look forward to that. And, um, uh, you know, the future is bright for Seven Grand. As I inhale the haze, tip the scale, beat the maze, bearing scars from the days of a massa beat the slaves. I use the language of the drums to translate rhythmic messages to diffuse the hate. I refuse to wait. Things are harder than before. Can't believe we haven't learned from the martyrs like Shakur. I'm harder to the core. Now I channel my bitterness. I handle my business and leave no witnesses.